So by request, we are going to do another discriminant test question. This time, where k is the b value. So remember that we're not using the entire quadratic formula. All we're worried about here is just the discriminant. So just to review, we should go back and figure out so what the discriminant is. First of all, it's the thing under the square root, which is b squared minus 4ac in this case. And we'll know that there are three cases that are possible for the discriminant. So the first case is that we have a positive discriminant. It's greater than zero. Second case is that we have exactly zero for our discriminant. And the third case is that we have a negative discriminant. So the first case, if we have a positive, because we have something to add and subtract, we're going to have two roots. Remember, adding, subtracting are coming from the axis of symmetry, and they give us our two different x-intercepts. The second case is the very specific case where you only get one real root. That's because your vertex is right on the x-axis. It is the x-intercept. And the last case is when you try to square root a negative, you get zero real roots, which means you actually don't have any x-intercepts. All right, so we're going to make use of these three cases to solve these three different questions. So my suggestion is, first of all, you recognize which question is which case. And usually, if you have to do all of them, do one real root first. And I'll show you why. When we do one real root, all that means is that the discriminant has to be equal to 0. So we don't have to worry about inequalities. We're using an equal sign. We can set the discriminant to 0. And we'll say a is 1, b is k. And notice I changed the c value to positive 9, so to negative 9 from the original start of this video. Anyway, once we plug our values in, we square root for k, we get plus or minus 6. And if we ask ourselves, well, why does this work? It's because what we're actually doing is we're creating a perfect square trinomial. What that means is if we were to graph it, our vertex in each of those cases would either, would either be negative 3 or positive 3 which means we'd be right on the x-axis. And so the vertex actually is the x, the x-intercept in the particular case where we have one real root, which we call case 2. So if that went too quickly, remember to pause it, go back, and follow the steps. So our answer to that one is that if k is plus or minus 6, we're good. Now, for if case 1, we have to set our discriminant to be positive. So basically, k has to be greater than 6. Or we could say that k is less than negative 6, because when we square, say, negative 7, or we square negative 8, it's still going to be greater than 36. So as long as we're outside of the 6s, we're good. And the last case is when we have no real roots. That's when we have a negative discriminant. It's just sort of the opposite of what we just did. What we need is to have k less than 6. Or really what we mean is it's in between negative 6 and 6. So as long as its absolute value is in between 6 and negative 6, then we'll have no real roots. Now, it's nice to look at these things graphically, either using your TI calculator or Desmos or Wolfram Alpha, something like that. I'm going to use Desmos to quickly play around with some of the numbers. So there is our k value of 6, and see how it was 6 or negative 6, we get a root right on the x-axis. Now, if we change that number, let's say I put in a 7. That's bigger than 6. Notice I get 2 roots and 8. but if I start to, I'm going to move my graph. Yeah, anything bigger than 6, I'm going to have two x-intercepts. If it's less than 6, notice I have no x-intercepts. I can change that number, get closer and closer to 6, I get closer and closer to the x-axis. That one looks like it's got a root, but if we zoom in, we'll see there's a little gap there. So 5.99 doesn't quite work, but 6 does. That's kind of the magic number for k that will make us have one real root.